peace. But a lot of people were saying, oh, Mark, is everything okay with you? And I said that on the video, the first of the spirit video, but I said that at the end of the video. And I understand most people don't watch the whole video. So I just stopped making videos for a little bit, but I'm back at 100% now. Thank you all for the prayers. It was just a little cold, nothing serious, but I'm gonna start this video off with the Bible verse. It's in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. It says that, and we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness, man. Wow, wow. So I'm gonna be talking to also about demonic strongholds, deliverance. Are we going in on this video? I haven't made a, I haven't made a live in about a week, so we're going in. Let's greet the people. What's up, what's up? What up, Bernie? What up, Chris? What's up, Renew That Mind? What's up, Nick? What's up, NG? What's up, Andrew? What up, Shirley? What up, Jake? What up, Lisson? What up, Carlina? What's up? What up, Brayden? Thank you so much, Andrew, for saying that. I appreciate you, man. What's up, uh, King Jordan, PCR? What up, bro? What's up, Kate from Canada? That's what's up. Shout out to Canada. What up, Elon the G? Hey, Mark, I found out my grandma is a witch. Wow. What's up, Alyssa? What up, what up? You guys can't smash the like button as you guys get in here. But, so you, got, you guys see the title. For those who aren't, like, didn't watch the, I didn't watch the Grammys, but I just saw, like, a whole bunch of videos going out. And you had, you know, gospel artists and, you know, pro, you know, christians right because everyone's like a christian nowadays everyone's a christian but not everyone denies herself daily and picks up their cross you know and i feel like that's just like a title nowadays and i said that in one of my videos like it's going to be a cool thing for people to become christians now they're not actually going to become born again they're not actually going to live a life of repentance uh, keeping god's commandments they're just going to become a christian because it's trending to do um i'm telling you i, I said this two years ago back when the uh, the you know what popped up 2020 you guys know what i'm talking about the C word, but I mean, we're seeing that now today. And when it comes to following Christ, if you're still in love with this world, you still have fellowship with this world, uh, you're still partaking in, you know, things that are, you know, of darkness pretty much. Um, you know, you're, you're using scripture to justify you, why you love the world and the things thereof. You gotta really, really, self-reflect look at the mirror because even the bible says that you got to examine yourself daily you know how is christ in you except you be reprobates okay that's what paul said in corinthians so how is christ in you except you be reprobates and i'm telling you anyone who's worldly i'm telling you all from experience man so how when it comes to spiritual warfare especially all you people who call yourself warriors for christ warriors for god the people who are you know the worldly type of believers they're going to be used by satan to, to take you out I'm telling y'all telling y'all man it's always going to be them, okay? Anyone who's still, you know, because the Bible even says that um, you adulterers and adulteress, know you not that the friends of the world is the enemy of God. Therefore, if any man be a, a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You know, how come these verses aren't, I don't really see these verses really being out there. It also says that in 1 uh, John chapter 2, verse 16, it says that, um, love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. If any man loves the world, the love of God is not in him. Wow, that verse cuts deep, man. So the time of being lukewarm, the time of serving God and serving Satan, that got to that gotta be put to, uh, to, to an end. And not many preachers are preaching against this because they want to tickle your ears. And, uh, you know, it's, it sells. You know, it sells to t t tickle people's ears. You're going to, you know, people will like you. And, you know, you're not going to face any backlash. That's what comes with, you know, tickling people's ears for the most part. And you got to understand when it comes to leaving the world, Satan doesn't want you to leave his kingdom. That's what, that's what the world, you know how when people talk about the matrix and stuff like that, most of them are talking about it in a carnal way, but the matrix, what the matrix is, is Satan's kingdom, the world. That's what it is. Uh, the Bible even says in Job chapter nine, verse 24, that the earth has been given over to the wicked one. Okay. Which has been given over to Satan. And you know, you got to always keep that in mind. When you start to leave this world, let's say you're getting convicted, um, the Holy Spirit's convicting you. Maybe you have fellowship with the world or maybe there's like a certain sin that's keeping you in darkness Because we know that there's certain sins that you will not inherit God's kingdom talks about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 to 10 uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 
Uh, there's plenty of scriptures that back that up. Okay, certain sins without repentance, okay, will not inherit God's kingdom. Go look it up if you don't believe me. Okay, so once you start to give up those sins, witchcraft, fornication, adultery, um, et cetera, et cetera, you know, drunkenness, all that, right? Once you start to give that up, you got to understand what strongholds are, okay? Let me, let me tell you all what a stronghold is. And now I, I'm so glad God gave me the wisdom to, so I could learn from this. And I can also teach you guys too as well what a, what a demonic stronghold is. Okay, the Bible talks about we don't, we, don't battle, we don't battle against flesh and blood. It also talks about how our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay, so what a stronghold is, I'm going to speak from my testimony, my experiences. Okay, so, you know, I've always been transparent about my walk. I always tell you guys what I battle with. Uh, I'm not like, I never claim to be this holy person and, you know, a man without sin, never, ever. Uh, I understand that we're under grace, but I don't abuse grace. I don't use scripture to justify my wrongdoing, you know? So I used to battle with smoking weed, right? So I always smoke weed. Uh, I started doing it when I was, I think I was like 19 or 20. And how I started that addiction, I think I got like my heart broken. And I never cared for weed. I had a lot of friends who did it. I never really, never did it. But when I got my heart broke, you know, I started doing it. And then I started doing like once a month. It wasn't like that. And it, it slowly started growing. And that's why I tell people all the time, like people are like, oh, Mark, you know, I can smoke again and I can, I can handle it. And I'm telling you, when you start to smoke, you're building strongholds in your mind. And that's why every time, you, you know, not just we're smoking, right? But every time you give up a sin, you kind of feel like you want to go back. You got to acknowledge that is a stronghold that's keeping you, that's, that's keeping you back. And how do you cast down strongholds? How do you get deliverance? Okay. One of the most important things you got to do, of course, is repent. And you got to start feeding your spirit. This is the most powerful thing, feeding your spirit, okay? Because your flesh is raging war. Your flesh wants you to go back to hitting the blunt. Your flesh wants to go back to watching porn, masturbating, uh, fornicating. Your flesh wants you to, always wants you to go against God, okay? And the more you feed your flesh, that stronger, that stronghold comes back. Because every time I would quit, right? I quit a sin, not just smoking, anything else, right? I know it's like I would have a strong urge, a strong temptation to go back. How come nowadays I don't feel that way no more? Because I cast down, I broke down all those strongholds, broke them all down, broke them all down, okay? Now, not to say I don't battle, you know, because we're all battling the flesh, but you got to always keep that in mind. When that, you have to acknowledge it, okay? This is why the Holy Spirit is important, because the Holy Spirit will show you. If there's a certain sin that you're battling with, a certain addiction, whatever the case may be, right? It will always let you know. It will convict you, okay? Now, many people, uh, they say they have the Holy Spirit, but hey, the Bible says we know a tree by its fruits. Many people say they have this and that, but they, ca they can't fool God and they can't fool those who can see, you know, who, you know those who, who are seers, who can see people who they really are, who have discernment, okay? So always keep that in mind. The Holy Spirit will convict you of something that you're doing that, that is as causing more strongholds. I'm telling you, the more you give into that sin, you're building more strongholds. And then when, the more you build it, think about like if you're building a house, right? Let me think of an example. Um, let's just say this, I know it's kind of small. Let's just say for this for example, right? Let's say you, you had an addiction, right? A stronghold that was that big, right? And then the more you feed, 10 years later, it doubles the size. And the more, the more higher it goes, the more that um, it's gonna be harder for you to set, be set free. It's going to be a lot harder for you to set free from the stronghold. So always keep that in mind. The more you feed into the, your flesh, the harder it is to get out. Okay, this is why it's so important to live a life of repentance daily. Okay, what's up, Divine Lee? What's up, bro? It's so important to live a life of repentance daily because if you don't, you're losing the spiritual battle. Everyone, every single person, every single human being on earth is in a spiritual battle. Even the tares, even the children of Satan. Some of them, they're trying to get back with God. Okay, but Satan already sold them. Okay, some of them are trying and you know they're just in say and see okay the children of saying that's what the bible says but you gotta understand every single person is a spiritual warfare and you being a chosen one okay you think no I, i'm seeing a lot now like everyone's a chosen one right it's like a trend it's like, i told you guys back in 2020 back when i had like 5,000 subscribers so not many people you guys watched my videos back then but I, I told people it's gonna be a church it's gonna be a trend to call yourself a christian to, to be a chosen one i knew it i saw that coming okay because it sounds cool it sounds cliche but are you really burying the fruits Okay, not everyone can say that. Are you really burying the fruits? Okay, are you, are you denying yourself daily? Picking up your cross? Or, you know, are you still in love with the world? Okay, so uh, don't, don't be deceived. I know I'm seeing a trend. Everyone's a chosen one nowadays, right? But best believe, though, when you, when you become a chosen one, the war, 
seems like the war gets stronger because you're held to a higher responsibility. We know what the scripture says, too much is given, much is required, okay? So when, when God chooses you, right, whatever he chooses you to do, maybe it's to preach, uh, maybe it's to become, uh, to, to provide for your family, um, you know, help, help the homeless out, feed uh, those in need, uh, maybe be a prayer warrior. We need more prayer warriors in today because best believe these witches, these warlocks, these wizards, these demons, these agents, they're praying against the children of the Most High. They're praying to Satan. Okay, they're praying to Satan. We got to pray to the Most High. We got to pray to God, you know, because it is a spiritual battle. And best believe you got witches out here casting spells. You got agents who are sent to harass you, to gang stalk you, who to, to watch you. Because we know what the Bible says, the wicked watch the righteous and seek to slay him. So you guys saw that example where I just showed you that building. And the more you're sinning, the stronger that you're like, think about like you building a house, right? It's a one, that, that building I showed y'all was a one story building and it grows to a two story, two story building, okay? Well, you know, the more you keep doing it, the more you, you're giving over to it, you're slowly building the stairs, then you're building the bathroom, then you're building more rooms. Every single, every single time you give over to it. And I'm telling y'all, when I broke free from, let's say I had, let's say, cause I was addicted to, to, to my weed addiction for like seven years. I was, I used to watch porn like for like 12 years. I started that addiction early. And that's why it's important guys. Like don't put your children in public schools, man. Don't, don't send them to the slaughter because that's pretty much what it is. When a child is in a public school, they learn about that stuff at a young age. I saw a tweet from uh, an elder and this man said that he was speaking to um, like a high school. He was speaking to them and he was telling them, you know, some of those little boys like, hey, don't focus on girls, you know, you know, do good in school, you know, stuff like that, motivation stuff. And then the little kid said to him, oh, you know, we, we, don't, we don't follow these O's, you know, these three or four. A little boy told him that. Man, that's crazy. So at that young age, people are already giving over to drugs, uh, sex, porn, masturbation. And, uh, you know, that's why I, I learned about that type of stuff. When I was, I never forget that. I was in sixth or seventh grade. Someone handed me a magazine. One of my friends back then handed me a magazine. And that's where the addiction started from. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, get your children out of those public schools. I'm, I'm letting you all know that's letting, lead, that's leading your children to the slaughterhouse. The Bible says train up a child when they're young. So when they grow old, they won't depart from it. So you're supposed to teach your children. I mean, I understand that not everyone has a work schedule to do that, but I, I just can't see myself putting my, my, especially my daughter, bro, how these girls in America are nowadays, bro. That's not a good idea. That's literally leading your child to the slaughter, man, straight up. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, when you're battling the flesh and stuff like that, the number one thing you want to do in the beginning stages is you want to depart from anybody who's tempting you. Who's like, you know, you know how the peer pressure is. When people are, you know, pressuring you to do certain things, someone who's pressuring you to, to sin, pretty much, and like you let them know, like, nah, I ain't trying to do that. Uh, you know, uh, I'm good, stuff like that. And they don't respect that. That's not your friend. Okay, those people don't care about your spirit. They don't even care about your soul. You know, and y'all gotta start having wisdom, man, knowing who's real and who's fake, discerning between, you know, who's really genuine in your life and who's not. And that's one thing that. I had to learn throughout when I was, you know, giving up my sins. There was a lot of people like making fun of me, like all of my friends, not just random people. I mean, friends I know for years, like making fun of me, calling me weird and crazy. Thank you so much, Jackson, for the super chat. Love you. You helped me more than anyone in my life. Wow, man, that's crazy. All praises and most high for that, man. God bless you. Friends of the world is the enemy against God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this, and this entire world, I'm telling you, they follow Satan, whether it's unwillingly or, or knowingly. Now, some people, you know, they're Satanists. Some people are willingly follow Satan. But a lot of people, they do it unknowingly. Uh, like I said, it could even be the so-called Christian, the so-called Hebrew Israelite. I'm telling you, telling y'all, or whatever religion, all these religions, man, all these religions, but there's one God. And the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. So, uh, and how do you not, how do you not, how do you know 100% you're not following Satan? Okay, you have to have the spirit and truth. How do you know that you're not deceived? The spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. What does the Bible say? Satan deceives the entire earth. You know, I remember I asked that question in one of my live streams. And I asked, and I was telling you all, I was like, you know, have you been deceived by Satan? Are you deceived by Satan? Everyone says no. But the Bible says the Satan deceives the entire earth. You know, you had people who got that, and they said they, they, you know, they, they said no. So you really gotta examine yourself, man, you know. People are choosing fear over faith. Whatever the beast system is telling them to do, they just bow down to it without no questions. They don't want to lose their job. Uh, they don't want to, you know, be an outcast in their family member or like in their family. 
and they just bow down and get it. Listen, listen. When you're when you're God's chosen one, you're gonna be the outcast. You're gonna be the underdog. You're gonna be the one who's hating on. I'm telling y'all, that's what comes with the territory. That's what comes. That's what comes when when you have the crown on. So always keep that in mind. And the Bible also says, if anyone's be if any, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. So please do not go back and forth with the reprobates. Please don't cast your pearls on the swine because you're only doing yourself harm. You're only wasting your own time by doing that. Okay, it's very, very important, man. It's a lot of times where I was giving my pearls to the swine and, you know, they cast the stone. They even, you know, if all, all I had to do was ignore them, right? You know, and they, and they were following Satan unknowingly. Like I said, it's a lot of people, guys, a lot of people blinded, blinded by their pride, blinded by their arrogancy, blinded by their self-righteousness, even the Pharisees. I'm, that's why I'm so glad the, the, the Pharisees existed because we could learn from them, okay? Even the people who believed they were so close to the Lord, right? They know all these laws, all these commandments. They appear holy on the outside, but in the inside, Christ said there, there were uh, uncleanness and dead man's bones, right? And they were of the devil. They were following Satan. They were going against the chosen one. They were going against Christ, okay? And it's a lot of people like that professing to be Christians. I'm telling y'all, man, it's a huge deception out here. And without, without the Holy Spirit, you won't be able to see, you know, and then there's people who ask, you know, oh, Mark, is this person a real prophet? Is this person a false prophet? Why don't you have the Holy Spirit and get the discernment to see for yourself? Why are you relying on someone? And especially when it comes to deliverance, okay? Now, I'm not saying that other people can't deliver you. Um, the Bible even says that Christ said that he'll give people power to cast out demons other people. I believe that. That's the scripture. Now, am I able to cast out demons other people? I've never, I never got that. I never received that gift, okay? Um, so I'm not saying that you, you know, you can't go to someone for deliverance. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I see people attacking people who, who have those ministries, like where they have deliverance where they can cast out demons. But the Bible says people, you know, people will be able to do that. Now I do know that Satan does give people the power, like the false power of them doing it too. So that's why you have to discern, you know, who's who. And, uh, you know, most importantly, okay. When it comes to receiving the Holy spirit, you don't, you don't get that. You don't go to a man for that. You don't go to, you don't go to a store to buy the Holy spirit. That's a free gift from God, okay? And if you lack discernment, why don't you ask God in prayer, right? You pray every single day. Why don't you start asking God for spiritual gifts? Because best believe when it comes to those spiritual gifts, you're gonna need it on your walk. Okay, I'm telling you, there's a lot of agents out here, a lot of witches, warlocks. It's a lot of them out here and they're praying on your downfall. They're praying against you, okay? Without the armor of God on, you're gonna lose a war, okay? Without the armor of God on, you will lose the battle, okay? And, you know, a, a special... A special uh, equipment when it comes to your armor, in my opinion, this is my opinion, it's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, okay? So when someone's trying to deceive you, when someone's trying to lead you astray, you know the word, okay? You know, you know, you know, just like when Christ, when the devil was trying to tempt him, he was trying to lie to him, deceit him, you know, pretty much lead him to hell, to, to steal his soul. He fought back with the word of God. So it's important to read your Bible, but it's also important to apply it into your life, okay? Because we know what the scripture says. If uh, anyone be a hearer and not a doer, you just deceive yourself. So if you're going to read your Bible and not apply it into your life, there's no need to read it. Like you're just wasting your, you're wasting your time. And I said that a couple of videos ago and it caused a lot of, you know, controversy. Oh, Mark, don't say that. Well, the Bible says you deceive yourself. So why, why even de deceive yourself? Even the Bible says that it would be better for them not to not, to not even know the ways of righteousness. Okay. But the dog has turned back to his own vomit. That's in the book of Peter. So uh, if you're going to read your Bible, make sure you're applying it to your life and be on fire, man. I want to be on fire for God. Uh, Christ is on fire for God, so I'll be on fire for God. To the Bible even says that we must walk like as Christ did. Okay, so I want to be on fire for God. I want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be making videos telling people, oh, it's okay to sin. We're saved under grace. But that's what you guys want to hear, though. That's what that's what the people want to hear. I don't want to be doing that. Many people are hearers and not doers. Yeah, man. Yep, yep. Hey, Mark, blessings. I got I got set back and started smoking. I was doing so good. Please pray for me. All right, got you, uh, Lizzie. Everyone should pray for Lizzie. And, and see, I'm telling y'all, that's how it is. There was many times on my walk where I was doing good. I, just, I stopped smoking for like a year and I went back. And it's a stronghold. I'm telling you guys, strongholds is what gets you back. Now, I, now for right now, I, I can't see myself going back to these sins that I've been delivered from because I don't even crave that. And this is how you know you're delivered. This is how you know, bro. Man, it makes me feel good. All praises to the most high, man. This is how you know you've been truly delivered. When you're around that type of stuff, because I live in California, so it's all around me, right? You know, I'm walking around. Even right here, there's probably someone doing it out here. But, like, I'm walking around, and I smell it, right? And it just smells nasty. And I just be like, dang, like, I can't believe I used to do that. That's how you know you've been truly delivered. We, we don't even crave it no more. 
Um, or same thing like when it came to like porn and masturbating. Like I can't see myself doing that no more. But it's crazy because back in the days, I was doing that every single day for, for decades or for a decade. I used to do that every single day. It wasn't, I didn't see no wrong in it. I didn't see nothing weird. And it is weird because you got to think about it. You're watching another man have sex with another woman and you're getting yourself off to that. Like that's weird, bro. Like to me, that's, that's weird. So, you know, um, I just can't see myself going back, you know, going back to my vomit. Like what, what gain do I have? God has brought me so far out. He has brought me so far. I'm not going to bring myself back into the bondage, the captivity of sin, man. I'm not doing that. So when God sets you free, you know, what does the Bible say? And then you'll know the truth and the truth shall set you free. I can't see myself going back, bro. I can't. I had to dig myself deep out of a pit. I had to go through spiritual, and you're going to have to go through this too. You're going to have to go through spiritual warfare, the devil using people to attack you. Uh, you're going to have to go through all that. I can't see myself going back into that, man. I can't, man. And I just pray that the Most High uplifts me because, you know, you never know. And life, life's unpredictable, just like what happened to Joe. You know, he was, the Bible called him perfect. He was living his life normal. And look what happened. You know, look what happened to him. So you could, I'm not going to say that. Oh, like nothing bad will happen because life is unpredictable. But as long as God's got, got us, if God be for you, who could be against you, right? So nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. Just keep going straight. The disciples, Messiah showed us overlooked by many. Yeah. Uh, I have no temptation. I have no temptation. Wait, I have no temptation from sexual sin anymore. I can't be more grateful. Yeah, you've been set free from the stronghold, bro. Yep. When you when you don't have those those those, those temptations or desires no more that you used to have. Remember back in the days you used to have that every single day, but now you go in weeks, you go in months, you go in years, and like uh, you don't have that desire no more. It's because you've been delivered. Okay, you've been set free from the stronghold, right? You've been set free from the stronghold. Quack quack cross. Oh, he's walking. Sometimes I'd be mad, they'd be quacking, but you've been set free, bro. And then you'll know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. All these fleshy pleasures are only for a moment, and they come with a lot of consequences. And it's really not even like once you start to think of the consequences of your actions, you're not you're gonna think twice before you think about the times guys like things that get you arrested, right? Things that get you arrested, things that you know get you locked up. You're gonna think twice before you do that because you know that it comes with a consequence. We gotta start thinking that same way when it comes to willfully sinning. When it comes to willfully sinning, we got to think of that same consequence because there is a spiritual consequence. It's like there's physical laws out here in the world, in the matrix. There's also spiritual laws too that God has in place. Okay, God has in place a spiritual law. So always keep that in mind. When you're breaking God's laws, that is a sin. Breaking God's laws, that is a sin. There's no birds out here, Alyssa. So actually there's one right here, chilling. Thank you so much, King, uh, King Jordan, for the super chat. Let me see if you'll let me read it. Uh, thank you so much. Says, Stay focused on being set apart and work to get wisdom from the word because people are turning a blind eye to the truth. Salute to you, leading people to apply themselves. Keep cooking, Mark, for real. All praise to the most high God. Thank you so much, bro. Yes, that's what we should be doing, man. Striving to be to be set apart and, you know, to be seeking wisdom, to be seeking wisdom more than we seek gold and to be seeking understanding more than we seek silver. Absolutely. OK, be set apart. Be holy. It says that without holiness, make peace. It says, um. It says, follow after uh, holiness and a peace with all men. For without such, no man shall see the Lord. Okay, so yes, we got to be set apart. What does it mean to be holy? To be set apart, uh, to not be of this world. Because to be of this world makes you an enemy of God. Okay, and when you're God's enemy and you're out here calling yourself a Christian or, you know, you love God and stuff like that. Well, your actions don't show that. And that's how most people are. I'm realizing that. Like most people, they do that to God. They do it to you too. They claim they love you. They claim they're for you. They claim they support you, but there's no action to back it up. It's the same thing how people treat God. It's the same thing, bro. And that's what God has recently shown me. It's the same thing. People say this and that. They talk this about you and, oh, yeah, you know, in a good way, right? You know, they say all this, but there's no action to back it up. Because what, what, what is the action to back it up? What did Christ say? He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So we got to keep, we got to apply it. We can't say we love Christ and we're not keeping the commandments. We can't say that. Yeah, we have to back it up with action. You know, in, in deed and in truth. So I'm realizing that too. It's not only people that to God, people do that to us, man. To all you chosen ones. People always gonna say, Oh, I love you, I rock with you. But there's no there's no actions to back that up. It's just words. It's just words. You know, how did how does Satan deceive Eve with his words? Okay, no actions to back it up what he said. It was just he lied to him uh, lied to her to see her. Pray that I get delivered from my sin of, of lust and have victory in my walk in Christ. 
in Jesus' name. Yeah, I got you. Hey, yeah, let's all pray for each other, man. Let's all, let's all pray for each other. I struggle with them. Wait, I struggle to love demonic stalkers. What the heck? Like a gang stalker, bro? I'm confused about what you said. It's hard to love your enemies, even the 6 6 church we must pray for. Yeah, it is hard. Yep, it's definitely hard. But you see, God gave me wisdom when it comes to uh, blessing your enemies. God, a couple months ago, I was going through a situation, and you know how hard it is to pray for someone who's literally cursing you? But even in the midst of that, I did, right? Someone who says, I'm going to hell. I mean, it's crazy, man. <laughs> And, you know, I pray for that. And, I, you know, because people can say, oh, I pray. You know how people are like, oh, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. But they never do. You know, you know how people, like, they use that, like, as a weapon, like, to criticize you. Oh, I'll pray for you. But they never even pray for you. Those are the worst people. Those are the worst people, bro. But this is what God showed me when it comes to praying for your enemies. Like, when you do that, you will receive a blessing. Those people who are cursing you, uh, falsely accusing you, you know, I'm telling you. When you pray for those people, when you, bless, like, you truly bless those people. Remember, because God knows your heart. Because you could just pray for them. And your heart doesn't have bad intentions. You got to really bless them with your heart. I'm telling you. I'm telling y'all, man. God will bless you. I'm telling you. You can say whatever you want. I know like, a lot of people don't like to hear this. But, um, you know, God definitely showed me that. When you pray for your enemies, you'll receive a blessing. Okay, even the Bible says if your enemy thirsts, give him water. If your enemy is hungry, feed him food. For you shall reap coals of, head on his, uh, coals of fire on his head. Someone leave that Bible. That's in uh, Romans. Leave that Bible verse. It says, if your enemy is hungry, give him something to eat. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. You'll, re you'll uh, receive a reward. So, wow, that Bible verse just popped up in my head right now, man. That's the Holy Spirit right there, bro. It just popped up in my head right now. So, yeah, when you're dealing with enemies, gang stalkers, agents, demons, witches, warlocks, uh, family going against you because you're God's chosen, don't even don't let it phase you. Just let pray for them and let God handle them. Because sometimes these people could be a distraction. You're going back and forth. That's what Satan wants. He wants you to be distracted. He doesn't want you to do the mission that God has you on. He doesn't want you to reach, uh, reach millions, thousands of people through the word. He doesn't want that. He wants you distracted. So sometimes these people are being used by Satan because Satan is their master. They call themselves Christians. I'm telling you, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. I've seen it all, man. Mark, I got me a new Bible to read, the Old Testament. Well, that's what's up. There you go. Thank you so much. Uh, CW, yeah, it says, Romans chapter 12, verse 20 says, Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. And if he thirsts, give him a drink. For in doing so, thou shalt reap coals of fire on his head. There you go. There you go. Yep. That Bible verse just popped up in my head right now, man. That's crazy. Yep. There you go. Saying is a father lies. Don't be deceived. Yeah. But let's talk about... Um, Thank you so much, uh, Luciana. I don't know how to say your name, but thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, brother, for the great teaching. Thank you for watching. But yeah, so when it comes to uh, deliverance, right? I was saying this earlier. I, I got to finish what I said. I believe that other people can deliver you, but I feel like, because I, I was delivered, right? I was self-delivered, okay? I cried out to the Father. I got on my knees. I fully repented. Uh, you know, I said, God, you know, I'm giving all this away, giving up the world. You know, I'm ready to do your will. Uh, you know, uh, I humbly come to you. Uh, now, I, now, when I did that, that's not just it. You know, you got to be obedient. You got to really be seeking the Father's heart. You know, you really got to be seeking after his heart. Think about the times where we saw after material possessions. We sought after a relationship, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, who that person most likely didn't even care for us. Uh, we sought after money. Uh, we saw after cars, you know, all these type of things, right? We got to be having that same energy. We got to be have that same energy to seeking after God's, uh, God's heart. And when you're seeking after a God's heart, you're going to be on fire for God, bro. I'm telling y'all, you're going to be 100% on fire and there's no looking back because you truly love him. Not, with your, not just with your words. Oh, Jesus, I love you. No, you love him with your actions. Okay, and the spirit bears witness. Okay, anyone can say whatever they want, but the spirit bears witness. So always keep that in mind. When it comes to deliverance, not saying that you can't go to someone else to do it, but you really want to be seeking it yourself. Because I was, people ask me this all the time, you know, how were we delivered? I was self-delivered. I got baptized. I fully repented. I was obedient. Now, I had to go through a lot of spiritual warfare. It's not easy. Oh, I, I got to tell you guys the other part. Okay. It's not definitely not easy. I had to go through a lot of spiritual warfare. Uh, I got thrown in a mental hospital. I, you, got, you guys see my testimonies in my older videos. Um, you know, got, you know, was homeless for a day or two 
um, you know, Satan was using pretty much everyone to go against me. Pretty much every single person. And we know what the scripture says. A man's enemies will be in his own household. Yep. So your enemies are going to be in your own house. They're going to be used by Satan to take you out. Okay, whenever you try to get delivered, whenever you try to give up the world, give up your sin, it's going to be those people of your own household who's going to be used by the devil to take you out. I'm letting you guys know. And unless, I'll give you an exception about that. Unless they're walking in truth too. Okay, but it's it, most of them, in these last days, it's a small remnant. It's a very, even the Bible says that. It's a small remnant of us who's actually willing to, you know, humble ourselves and follow after the Lord. Okay, it's only a few of us. Most people, guys, they're going to have demons. They're going to be aware of it. And they're not going to do anything to try to fight those demons off. You got people saying, it's like a cool thing to call someone a demon. It's a cool thing to be on demon time. That's cool. That's cool to this world. Because they follow Satan. This world follows Satan unknowingly. Whether knowingly or unknowingly. Because there are people who do it knowingly. But, yep, they follow Satan. They, they, follow, they, that's, they love him. They love what they love. Because Satan could bless you too. Now, his blessings are, are a curse. Because it's just temporary. The real blessing is internal life. Satan can't give you that. But he could give you money. He could give you girls, you know, and material possessions. But what is that, that going to do for your soul? Nothing. Only people who are soulless, they, they, they convent and lust after those type of things. Especially at being a certain age. Because once you reach a certain age, God's going to show you. He's going he's to let you pick a side. Okay, now if you're like in your teenage years, you know, then that's different. But once you reach your 30s, your 40s, bro, God, God revealed himself to you. But many people, they didn't want God. You know, many people wanted Satan. So always keep that in mind. The world follows Satan. They're going to choose him. And whenever you're trying to live a holy life, a set apart lifestyle, people are going to be used by the devil to, to criticize you, to falsely accuse you, uh, to get you to, le to lead you astray, to peer pressure you. That's what they're going to be used by, man. So always keep that in the back of your mind. And then also keep that in the back of your mind. I was speaking, uh, I was speaking of strongholds, but let me talk about these demonic spirits real quick. Okay, so the Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45, it says that when an unclean spirit leaves a man, you know, let's say that, you know, you repented, uh, you got delivered, right? You got delivered from certain, certain sin, whatever, right? And you go back into your old ways. Uh, now, let me, let me make this very clear. Let's say if you fall short, they're not going to come back in. But when you're will, willfully given over to it, you feel no sorrow, you know, no remorse. Because best believe those seven spirits are sent by God. Yes, yes. God's in control of the light and the dark. So when God sees that, you're not trying to repent. Because remember, God's, God's a God of mercy, God of grace. So if you just sin once, and you know you make a mistake once, right? He's not going to allow this person. But once he sees you rejoicing in evil, once he sees you, you know, you're not trying to repent. You're just, you know, making, making excuses to justify whatever you're doing. He's going to, God himself is going to send over those seven spirits. And they're more, they're going to be more wicked than they were uh, the, the, when he first had them. Okay, and he's going to rejoice to see you suffer. You want to know why? Because you rejected him. Yes. The Bible, I know I said that in one of my videos and, you know, the lukewarm Christians were offended. Oh, God wouldn't rejoice. Well, if you read, if you read the Proverbs, it says that God rejoices to see when, when, the, you know, the wicked, the evil, when they fall. God, yes, God does rejoice. Yes, he does. Okay, I know that the, these churches aren't really, aren't really giving you this fire preaching. So you get mad at me. Because you're so used to getting your having itching ears. You're so used to the milk, the milk preaching. You're so used to that. But how about you try some meat for once in your life? How about you try some steak? How about you try some beef, some chicken? I, I want, I want, I want the meat, man. Because I've been hearing the milk all my life. I want to hear something. I want to hear some conviction, bro. I don't know about y'all, but I want to hear some conviction. I want to learn something. I want to learn something that's gonna boss me up, change my life. That's what I want to learn, man. I don't want to be hearing this milk stuff all the time. And don't get it wrong, it's good to have the milk when you're when you're in the beginning stages, okay? I'm not because I had the milk once, so I understand that. But eventually, man, yeah, you want the meat, man. I'm trying to just like a baby. Eventually, the baby don't want no milk no more. It wants steak. It wants chicken. <laughs> it want meat, man. Make sure it's not GMO. Huh, that's funny, Jacqueline. Yeah, definitely. I mean, all this food in America is all it's all GMO, man. The only real food you can, you can eat. It's not in America. America's, that's why you see, you look at the men nowadays, a lot of men, if you look at the men back in like 30 years ago, 20 years ago, they all look masculine. Now you look at men, like they don't have that. It's because of the food. It's because of the, uh, you know, watching the websites, the obsessive masturbation. I would say mostly the food. I would say mostly the food because we consume that 
every day. So uh, they're definitely putting something in America. And I wouldn't go overseas. Like when I went to Jamaica last year, I got a honey bun. I, I made a video on this. I think I deleted it, but I was talking about how the ingredients on that honey bun had like, it had like six ingredients on it, like the basic stuff. And when you go to America, it has over 40 ingredients in a honey bun. Why is there 40 ingredients in a honey bun? And the one in Jamaica, which only has six ingredients, tasted way better, tasted way better too. So it's like, what are they feeding us out here, man? Bill Gates, you know, I can't really speak too much about that, but y'all know he's buying up the land, buying up the crops, the fruits, which are supposed to be the healing of a nation. It's now being infested with GMO, chemicals, pesticides, some of the meat, most of the meat has steroids in it. Uh, it's looking bad out here in America, man. Um, you know, in the future, I hope that I get out of this Babylon prison because that's really what it is. It's a prison out here in America. It is crazy how people be like, oh, the American dream. What, what's their dream here? This is, this, is, this is prison, man. The Bible says that the wicked shall be turned to hell. This whole nation, or I said, no, the wicked shall be turned to hell and all nations I forget about God. This nation, America, has forgotten about God. This is like the this is like hell planet out here, bro. You see in the Grammys, they worship Satan, you know, right in the open on television where millions of people are watching. The Super Bowl last year where the week was performing, the, it was a sign that said Satan on it. So this is America that has been turned to hell. People would rather worship Satan because they want that clout. They want that vanity, you know, and you know, they want the money. But you got to understand when the money runs out, you can't get your soul back. That's what a lot of these celebrities who sold their soul. You can't get your money back, bro. All right, sorry, you can't get your soul back. But, you know, people like that temporary pleasure. People like, you know, the, the temporary escape. They want to flex on Instagram. They want to flex on Twitter and whatever these apps are. TikTok, want to make those stupid little dances. I mean, this generation is, is lost, man. They got the wrong motives. What's up, St. GQ? What up, bro? The American dream is BS. I absolutely agree with you, man. 100% BS. And I understand why our parents moved out here. You know, some of us had parents in, in Mexico and Africa, all over the world. We came out here because they wanted to have a better lifestyle for our family, you know, better jobs out here. I understand that. But, you know, once you start to realize that you only need a little bit and you'll be happy, money doesn't make you happy. And that's a lie that they told us. They told our parents that, oh, you'll be, money will make you successful, make you happy. If you have all these houses, I know people who got a whole bunch of houses and they're miserable. They're, they're more miserable than they were before they had all that. So. It's just an illusion. It's just an illusion, man. There's so much work to do in here in America. God is merciful. My brother Mark, keep preaching, King. Thank you, Saint Jake, uh, GQ. Thank you, bro. America is somewhere you should dream of. Keep you under a strong delusion. Yeah, definitely. Hey, can y'all hear me? It's kind of, I'm under a highway right now. I don't know if y'all can hear me. Can y'all hear me? Those people who are, who are in that army, they're all under Satan's rule. Letting you guys know this right now. All those people, the rainbow people. Okay. Um, let me be very clear too. I'm not here to condemn nobody, cast a stone on nobody. I'm telling you, okay, now if you struggle with something, uh, this whole video should have helped you out talking about deliverance uh, Talking about strongholds Always keep that in mind when God has set you free. Do not look back guys. Don't look back I'm telling y'all. It's a death trap that temporary pleasure uh, If you know there's something that's opening doors in your life That's gonna destroy you. Don't open that door Do not open that door because when you open that door It's gonna come with a lot of regret a lot of sorrow and uh, you know you'll be you'll be wishing. Oh, I wish I never did that. I wish I never did that. But it'll be too late, because now you got to reap what you sow. He who sows to his flesh shall reap corruption, and he who sows to his spirit to, shall reap life everlasting. We got 700 people in here, and only 400, 300 likes. So, if you guys can hit the like button. People are just now joining. And for those who are just now joining too as well, I haven't been able to go live because I was under the weather. Uh, I, I try to make videos too, but the video that I made, people were like, oh, Mark, is everything okay? Your energy seems off. And I understand that people don't watch the entire video. And I said at the end of the video that I was under the weather. My voice sounded different, but I'm 100% now. So expect more content. Now, I'm moving on Monday. 
So maybe no videos on Tuesday and Wednesday. I gotta get everything together, but yeah, man. It's funny how I just said, I said there's 700 people in here and there's only 300 likes. Now there's only 500 people in here. You see how I told you guys people are just watching you just to watch you? They're just watching you just to watch. You know, some people are watching you to see, to see if they can get any false doctrine in you so they can make content. Some people are watching just to watch. Uh, some people are watching for entertainment. You know, so it's just, everything is a game to some of these people. And then you have, the, you have like only 10% of people are actually support you. It's only about 10%. Most people are just watching just to watch. That, that's most people. Modern spirits. Oh, yeah. I'm glad he brought that up. That's exactly what most people are. People who are just watching you just to watch. Modern spirits is 100% real, guys. That's real. It has a lot to do with gang talking, which is all linked to spiritual warfare. We know what the scripture says. The wicked watch the righteous and seek to slay him. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Much love from Africa. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, what, what do you mean by that? Can God show your spouse in a dream? Like before you guys are together or like after? Because uh, the Bible says what's done in the dark will, will come to the light. So let's say if you're, your spouse is doing something behind your back, it will always be brought to the light. Now, if you're talking about your spouse before you got a spouse, okay, no. I, I, I never got a dream where I saw my spouse before we got, nah, I never seen that. Um, I just climbed up a hill, guys, so I'm taking a little break. Very thankful for you, brother. Been helping me a lot, but I've still been struggling. You know, we all we all struggle. The, the, the main thing is not to give up. The main thing is, you know, to keep the faith. No matter if you're struggling, no matter if you had a, a weak point in life, a flat line, uh, just don't give up. Keep the faith, bro. So, um, that's, 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 the, that's the main question, man. You know, that's, oh, sorry, the main answer when it comes to you battling. A lot of people, they struggle and they're like, well, this, this walk is not for me. They entertain those thoughts just because they're struggling. Uh, they don't want to put the armor on. Uh, they're not trying to be set apart. They're not trying to give up this world. And because of that, you know, they, they leave. They go back to Satan. They were following God and they go back to Satan. So there's a lot of people like that. And uh, oh, there's a little golfer right there. I don't know if y'all can see it. Nah, yeah, y'all can't see it. Oh, there you go. There you go. Hey. There was a verse that I said in the beginning of this video. It's in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. It says that, and we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. Okay, man, that's a fact. That's a fact. The whole world lies in wickedness. Okay, the whole world is going to unknowingly, some of, them will, some of them will know, but most of them will unknowingly follow after, say, after saying. You have people who still, after all that God has showed us with the you know what, uh, all the things that's happening in the world. And then people still don't believe in God. That To me, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. I think I actually just muted the chat. Okay, never mind. Thank you so much, Simona. Thank you. Maybe nightmare, but no weapon form shall prosper. What's up from Louisiana? What's up, Eric? What up, bro? Nature is beautiful. Yeah, this is nice, man. This is super nice. That's the good thing about California, that there's a lot of mountains out here. It's, it's beautiful view. Wow, this is nice, man. It looks nice on the phone. Why is it like that? It looks hella nice on the phone. The trees. You got the animals right there. I don't know if y'all can see that. Can y'all see that right there? Right there. There you go. Man, it's very peaceful. I used to come out here and read my Bible. This spot right here, I used to always come out here way back in the days. I remember I read Isaiah over here. But yeah, man. You know, so, so I used to come out here too, meditate. Man, those are the good days. Back when I was, you know, like a babe. I bet heaven looks way better. Oh yeah, definitely. I agree, I agree with that. What's up, uh, Asmiya? What up, bro? Some people want a very deep sleep. Yeah, man. Love you, bro. For real, for real. I needed this live. I'm super sick. 
right now and legit and just need some food for the soul. That's what's up, man. Yeah, I just got done with the cold. I just got done with the cold, man. Being sick sucks. But also, guys, let me say this real quick too. Don't sick. Get that. Get that word out of your. Out of your uh, get that word out of your vocab. Okay. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. If you're out here saying you're sick, you're sick. You're gonna manifest that in your life. So that's why I say I'm under the weather. Um, best believe words are. You know, words have power. Okay. You could also cast spells with your words. A lot of the English language we learn. A lot of the stuff is actually death. Okay. When people are laughing, cracking jokes, they say, I'm, you know, D-E-A. I'm not going to say that in my mouth because I know the power in your words. Uh, or they say that I'm, you know, W-E-A-K. They're weak. And they say, like, I'm, you know, they don't even understand that they're casting a spell on their life. So always take heed to that. Keep that in your back of your mind. Monitor what's, what's coming out of your mouth. I'm very, very cautious of what comes out of my mouth because I know that death and life lies in the power of the tongue. And I know that I could, I could bring blessings with my tongue or I could attract curses, okay? You know, with your tongue, just with your tongue. Okay, it talks about that in James chapter three. So always, always pay, you know, guard your eyes, you know, what you're watching and also monitor what's coming out of your mouth because best believe that a lot of this language in America, our ancestors, the Hebrews, we weren't, they weren't speaking English. This language is a curse. You know, a lot of people don't even know that, that they're, you know, or they say that they use God's name in vain. That's like, that's like the language out here in America and English language. So it's like, a, it's, all, it's a curse. Okay. This is a, you know, a pagan, a pagan society, a pagan nation and a pagan language. Okay. So we were, our, our answers were speaking Hebrew. Now, of course we don't, you know, most of us don't speak it, but this language right here, you got to be very cautious of what's coming out of your mouth because a lot of the stuff that we're speaking unknowingly, we don't even know that we're, we're, we're speaking curses. So always monitor what's coming out of your mouth. And I want to finish this off too with quick tarot cards. You can have strongholds, strongholds with horoscopes. Um, what's all, you know, the crystals, all that new age type of stuff. That's also a stronghold too. Many people who were like, oh, Mark, you know, you show, uh, you know, God was working through you to tell me about after watching tarot cards. And they kept on watching tarot cards. They, they weren't even uh, um, aware that that's a stronghold. When you go back into something, okay, especially that's something that's linked to witchcraft, sorcery, uh, divination. Uh, best believe it, guys. So always understand that it is a spiritual warfare and what, what are you feeding your mind? Because if you're feeding the mind the wrong things, you know, you can just be building strongholds. And, that, and the more you, you give it over to it, the stronger that building grows and grows and grows. So cast it all down. Uh, the Bible even says that we don't, we don't battle against flesh and blood. And it says that, you know, our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay. So the spiritual weapons, how do we cast down these strongholds? How do we, you know, take these demons out of us? Uh, fasting and prayer. Matthew chapter 17, verse 71. Sun's right in my eye. Matthew chapter 17, verse 21 says that uh, some spirits can only come out by, by praying and fasting. So it's very important to, to live a life of uh, a prayer. And, you know, now you don't have to fast every single day. Now, if you choose to, you can. But um, when, if you're going through, you know, a lot of strongholds or like demonic spirits and keeping you in bondage, the most important thing you should be doing, you should be practicing a lot of fasting. And I feel like right now I'm in the season of doing that. Now, I'm not doing that right now because I know there's going to be someone saying, oh, Mark, you're not supposed to tell people you're fasting. Someone's going to say the obvious. I already know that. I'm not fasting right now. But I'm saying I might go into a season where I'm doing that a lot because uh, that, it strengthens your spirit. It makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier to walk, you know, to walk in the spirit. So um, that's very important, too. Someone says fine gospel music. Yo, I was thinking about this, right? Right? Let's put my baby to sleep. Like, she, she wouldn't sleep. But once I played the baby music, she went right to sleep. So music, there's a lot of power in the music, man. There's a lot of power in the music. Even in the, um, I think it's in, the, in Samuel, where um, I think it was either David or Saul that was going through something. No, yeah, Saul who was going through something, and then David played music, and he felt better. So there's a lot of power in the music, too. If you're out here listening to secular music, it's talking about sex, drugs, vanity. Don't be surprised where you see your lifestyle reflects that, sex, drugs, and vanity. So there's a lot of power in the music. Uh, it's crap. I, I learned that. I'm, I, I've gained a lot of wisdom by having a child, man. A lot. Like the music, there's a lot of power in the music, man. There's a lot of power. A lot of y'all listen to secular music, sex, drugs, vanity. Oh, I, I'm running up on the ops, you know, violence. And you wonder, and you see your life, you know, reflecting that. Uh, man, there's a lot of power in the music, man, guys. A lot of power in it. So always keep that in mind. Now, there is fake gospel. Some of the fake gospel movies. Yes. A lot of the mainstream gospel artists, you guys should already know who they are. Uh, you should avoid those, uh, you know, you have gospel artists winning the Grammys, which is crazy, man. They want to be of this world. They want to be of this world. So, you know, there's a lot of, lot of people like that. 
So yeah, just because it's a gospel music doesn't mean it's of God. So you know, discern, use your discernment. You know, you have gospel offer. I think the 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 one who who won the I don't want to say I don't want to say them wrong. So correct me if I'm wrong. But I think it was Kurt Franklin and Maverick City. Okay, those are gospel artists of the world. Shalom, Ak. Yah will bless you with many blessings of the kingdom. I appreciate for being a warrior of Yah. And keep encouraging the saints and all the nations. Love you so lot. Thank you so much, Javon, for the super chat. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate the kind words. The Bible says kind words are like a medicine. So what you just said right there, that was a medicine for my soul. Kind words are as like a medicine. That's in the book of Proverbs. Man, that, that's a blessing, man. I appreciate you, bro. For real. Uh, thank you so much, Cameron. I'm just now seeing the super chats. My bad. Says, every time I get urges to fap, I tell myself that porn and ETC ain't me no more. That is dead and that helps me. Yeah, yep. That's what's up, man. The Bible says I, he must increase and I must decrease. So the Christ, Christ in you must increase and the flesh, it must decrease. Because the, the, you got to continue crucifying this flesh. Because if you don't, that flesh is going to get the best of you, man. So every, every single day is a battle until we get those, until we get the new bodies that the Bible speaks of. And we're getting new bodies and we're not, the body is not going to be subject to sin. So I'm just waiting for that day, man. All the true believers are waiting for that day because, you know, it gets tiring fighting this flesh, man. It gets tired. Sometimes it's going to be tired, bro. You know, sometimes it's just be tiring, man. But, you know, even though we might be tired, we don't give up. We don't give up, man. We keep the faith in the Son, the Son of God, and, and, God, and the Most High. What do you think about the third eye? All that stuff is demonic, man. The third eye, all that type of stuff. Uh, it's all new age, man. Meditate on the word. Meditate on the word. Someone says, forget about the third eye. Open your Bible. Absolutely, man. <laughs> exactly. A lot of people like the new age stuff. They, they like the, the carnal stuff because they're carnal. So they're given over to more carnal things. When it comes to spiritual things, they, they don't want to hear about that. Don't give up. Got to keep God first. Yep. Destroy the flesh and feed the spirit. Yep. Absolutely. What if a girl had a dream and a guy she knew appeared in the dream and she told him he's his wife? Uh, I don't know about that, man. You don't need to fap stray away from earthly things. Uh, someone says, I used to listen to Summer Walker all the time and was depressed and had a Jezebel spirit. Well, there you go. Yeah, those female artists are all making you guys masculine. It's funny, too, because they say, I don't need a man, F a man, all that type of stuff, right? The whole time they have a husband. Beyonce made all the single ladies, all the single, right? And she has a husband. Cardi B says, uh, blank him and I get some money. She has a husband. So they're, they're leading you astray, and they're working for the devil. Best believe it. Cardi B, Beyonce, Summer Walker, they're all working for the devil. To get you to be single, single and bitter, okay? To get you to believe that you don't need a man, like you could do bad all by yourself, and you, and you all feed into it. And let me tell y'all something this real, real quick too. If a woman's not following after God, she's not following the Bible, okay? She's going to be given over to following uh, sat satanic stuff. Letting y'all know right now, any woman, okay, who doesn't have a husband, who's not being who's not being guided by a man, maybe her father, okay? Um, she And she's not following after the Bible, the word, okay? She's going to be given over to satanic things, okay? She's going to be following the Satan. Guys, a woman needs a head. But see, these artists that y'all listen to, remember, the music y'all listening to, I don't need a man, F a man, uh, you know, I, you know, my, my, my P, my WAP sales, I can, you know, get on OnlyFans, I can, you know, be sexually liberated. Man, they're sending y'all to hell, man. They're sending you, and they're setting you up to be bitter and single moms, bitter, bitter, bitter single moms, man. So watch what you're listening to. I know what Satan's doing, uh, making y'all woman masculine, making the man feminine. You got rappers putting nails in their, um, you know, dress, uh, dressing, uh, putting on dresses, putting on nail polish. I mean, it's just, a, it's just weird times, man. A lot of weird times going on. So always keep in mind that there's an agenda. There's a war for your souls. And uh, Satan does not want you to have a husband. And a lot of you brothers, Satan just wants you to be, be a warmonger, just to be smashing this and that, uh, not bearing children, you know, you know, killing your children. Okay, and I'm not, I'm not here to condemn nobody who did that. You know, you, you got to repent. And keep it moving, but you don't want to be, you know, giving over to that those type of things, man. So, you got you got female rappers talk uh, glorifying abortion, man. It's sad, sad times we're living, man. Sad times. That's true, Mark. Beyonce's song, "Who Run the World Girls," 
was a spell from the Jezebel spirit. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. She's definitely a Jezebel spirit for sure. Um, Psalm chapter 119 verse 127 says, therefore, I love your commandments more than gold, even the purest gold. Yep. That's what's up. Uh, featured bride of Christ. That's what's up. Is it bad if you want to stay single? No, it's not bad if you want to stay. There's nothing wrong with that. They say we being religious when we stand against it. Yeah, they're just lukewarm. They're just lukewarm. That's where a lot of people are. Not everyone's meant to be married. Yeah, that's facts. Thank you so much, Cat the Realtor, for the super chat. Appreciate you, sis. Thank you so much, uh, Ja J, for the super chat, too. They're after your souls. Put the armor of God on. It's looking crazy out here. Yup. Facts. Facts, man. So, yeah, just walk in wisdom, man. If you don't have wisdom, ask God. He'll give it to you. But yeah, guys, it was a pleasure building with y'all. This will be on my main channel tomorrow, so if you join late... Oh, no, actually, it will be on my main channel on Friday. No, Saturday. It'll probably be on Saturday, I think. Yeah, maybe on Saturday. So uh, make sure you guys turn the post notifications on. Uh, smash the like button, get the likes up. And uh, if you guys wish to support me, my links are down below in the description. I was under the weather for a little bit, so I, wasn't, I haven't been... If you guys noticed, I haven't made a video about a week, but I'm back at it. See you guys on the next video. Love you guys so much.